will jump center. And the opening tip is controlled by the Bobcats. They're in the road, green uniforms. Toledo in the home grays. Lamont Simpson, Edwin Young, and Brian Anslinger, our officials tonight. Davion Kirk, the exciting freshman point guard, runs the offense for Ohio. He averages better than 15 points a game. It's a missed jumper from Jordan Dardis, the reigning Mac East player of the week. And here come the Rockets on their first set. That's what Ohio really needs to avoid is Treshawn Fletcher getting into the lane, but a turnover forced by the Bobcats and a good start defensively for them. Yeah, that, that's what Ohio wants to keep Toledo out of. They want to keep Fletcher out of the lane. That pass there didn't work, but it go out of. They want to keep Fletcher out of the lane. That pass there didn't work, but if he can continue to get into the lane time and time again, it's going to be a long night for Ohio. Kirk and Dardis, two-fifths of the starting five. Gavin Block, Mike Laster, and Doug Taylor, the other three. Taylor leads the Mid-American Conference in block shots. Has two blocks per game, and no surprises in the Toledo starting. If he can continue to get into the lane time and time again, it's going to be a long night for Ohio. Kirk and Dardis, two-fifths of the starting five. Gavin Block, Mike Laster, and Doug Taylor, the other three. Taylor leads the Mid-American Conference in block shots. Has two blocks per game, and no surprises in the Toledo starting five. Treshawn Fletcher in the heart of the starting five graphic, and he really is the heart and soul of this Toledo team. Gets the Rockets on the board first. The threat of Treshawn, of Treshawn coming off that pick and roll is going to cause problems for Ohio all night. You see there, they anticipated he was coming off to his right again, but they're going to have to figure that out. Good defense by Taylor Adway on Doug Taylor. Taylor a little long on the short baseline shot. Marion Jackson having a terrific freshman season for Toledo, running the point along with Jalen Sanford. Shot clock down to 10. Anway double team. The kick to a wide open. Treshawn Fletcher. There's them. There's Toledo getting in the paint again. Causing the Ohio defense to all five guys to suck in. He was able to hit Fletcher for the three. Treshawn Fletcher five. Ohio nothing. Reggie, what do you want to see from Ohio tonight? Ohio's going to look to get off to a good start. The way they were dominated in that last game. They really want to stay in this game from the beginning so the players don't mentally get disengaged from the game. They want to guard Toledo's three-point shots. That's such a weapon for them this year. They want Toledo to make twos, and they want to keep them out of the lane. They will take long jump shots that aren't threes from Toledo. Dardis and Taylor combining to force the turnover there. Meanwhile, what are you looking for from the Rockets? Ohio's top three scores are all perimeter players. They want to keep those guys in check. They also want they want to keep Ohio off of the glass from second shots, close out possessions. Then they want to not turn the ball over. If they don't turn the ball over, they get shot after shot, such as that one. They'll get those up and they'll be they'll hit the threes tonight. Well, you mentioned a moment ago one of your keys for Ohio is to guard the three-point line. They have not done so thus far. Toledo have knocked down their first two. The first from Treshawn Fletcher, the second from Marion Jackson. Good extra pass from Nate Navagato to Jalen Sanford. Goes right by Jordan Dardis. 10-0 Toledo, and Saul Phillips needs a timeout. It's hard to guard that three-point line when you got guys getting in the paint. The attitude of this Ohio team, it has been such a difficult season because of a lot of injuries and some attrition. No Antonio Campbell or Jerron Simmons anymore. So a lot of guys have had to either play hurt or play roles they're not accustomed to. Still thinks this group is chugging along and capable of maybe making a run in the MAC tournament as Mike Laster comes up empty from three. Well, at this time of the year, Coach Saul has wanted to keep the guys on, keep their eyes on the prize. As far as the MAC tournament is around the corner, they could possibly still make a run. We talked about Nate Navagato in the open. That is what he does best. A 41% three-point shooter in a 13-0 run to start for Toledo. Gavin Block picked up the dribble in the lane. This is Zach Butler in off the bench. Spelling Tavion Kirk in the early going. Block swinging it out to Laster on the perimeter. Eight to shoot for the Bobcats. Laster doesn't use the screen set by Doug Taylor. Laster, season opening, attacks, great defense by Treshawn Fletcher. 
Lester just getting to his feet under the basket. Sanford will hoist a three. The Rockets proving they are merely mortal, finally missing one from beyond the arc. Well, they still got a good look up, but that was caused by the defense. All five guys, active feet, active hands, helping everywhere. They're really stifling Ohio thus far. Uncontested jumper. Taylor Adway has been magnificent defensively on him in these first four and a half minutes. He, he realized what, are, what Taylor's strengths are. He's keeping him out of the paint, causing him to shoot those jump shots. He's doing a great job. Taylor Adway, a guy that averages about 15 minutes a game for Toledo. He has started all but one game this year with Luke Kanapke getting the lion's share of the minutes. Adway fouled on the way up by Jordan Dardis. So Adway will shoot two after the timeout. A near perfect start for the run. That's because Toledo is covering them every, everywhere on the court. They're also coming down and knocking down shots, which is demoralizing also. They just have to continue this if they want to want the first half to finish out this way. Taylor Adway, a 63% foul shooter for the year. It's both, and he will be replaced by Luke Kanapke, the sophomore from Minster, Ohio. Kanapke, one of the most efficient scorers in the MAC, at just under 58%. Second only to James Thompson, the fourth of Eastern Michigan, shooting a pretty decent 68% from the field. And Ohio with their first two points right out of the timeout. That's Jordan Dardis, who poured in 38 on 10 of 15 from three in a win over Akron last week. He may need 38 again tonight if the Bobcats are going to hang around. That's the only way they're going to be in it. Somebody has to have a great game. They also have to start getting stops on this end. James Gordon, the fourth, missed it off the heel, and Dardis with the rebound. Willie Jackson missing his fifth consecutive game. He is in uniform, sitting on the end of the Toledo bench. We were told not to expect him. Talked to him at shoot-around today, asked how he was doing. He's not used to having to sit out so long because of injury. Of course, he was a mid-year transfer from Missouri last year. He said, I'm getting frustrated. Really want to be out there. Really want to help the guys. Wide open three from the top. And getting the shooter's bounce is Kevin Nickel, a grand year transfer from Florida Gulf Coast. And that's good action by Ohio to set the pick and roll, try to get in the paint and throw it back out. That's the only way you're going to be open to get such a versatile Toledo team. Active hands from James Gullett off the bench. And that's a showtime throwdown for Kevin Nickel with five quick points. Again, he saw the first one go in and... Ohio starting to extend their defense, was able to pressure Fletcher and not let, let him have an easy way off the pick and roll. James Gordon throwing it away. He sent the pass in as Jalen Sanford cut to the basket. This is a 7-0 run for Ohio. Slight miscommunication there. Thought he should have been popping, but Toledo's going to have to be sure everybody's on the same page. You don't want to let Ohio back into this game. Dylan Alderson has just checked in for the Rockets, a freshman from Clarkston, Michigan. Won a state championship there last year. Treshawn Fletcher will get a couple minutes on the bench. Butler's denied by Marion Jackson as he tried to go baseline. This is Mickle going to work against one of the really elite shot blockers in this league in Luke Kanapke, and Mickle with seven points and a real spark for Ohio off the bench. Yeah, he's come off and played well. Somebody from Toledo is going to have to answer the challenge. He's knocked down the three, had some strong moves. That's exactly what your bench is supposed to do for you. With Sanford from the outside. His first three-point make of the night, and the fourth made three for Toledo already. Yep, Sanford, one of their most consistent shooters. You can't give him a good look. He's so versatile because he can also drive to the lane. Gavin Block clangs the jumper. Kanapke with the board. Gavin Block player that Saul Phillips says is one of the toughest he has ever coached. Told me today he leads this team in charges taken at about 10 times as many as anyone else. Gordon goes to work and his pass was read perfectly by Dardis who spun away from trouble. There's the lob for Butler. It didn't come off but stuck back in by Nickel. Toledo there getting a little careless with the ball. They have to be sure they're complete every pass, meet every pass. You can't get yourself in trouble 
thinking you're going to bail yourself out, throwing it out up top. You see how aggressive Ohio's being on those passes. Nickel almost forced another turnover. Kanapke will work on him here. Spins to the baseline and got the soft touch. Nice strong move by Kanapke. Notice that his defender was playing him towards the middle. He was able to spin back baseline and, and lay it in. Mickle got it. How about Kevin Mickle, 11 of Ohio's 13 points? He's on fire. Everything he throws up is going in. Kanapke's going to have to answer that challenge and maybe deny him the ball. Kevin Mickle, 24 years and 130 days old. He is the 11th oldest player at the Division I college level. Providing some much-needed experience for this Ohio team as Kanapke gets to the goal. That's how you can slow a guy down. Sometimes the best defense is offense. you got to go back at him and make him play a little bit of defense because he's been red hot thus far. That was a heat check. Nicholas pulled off somewhat, I suppose. Well, he had to finally play some defense. Nickel took a page out of the Toledo playbook. Like the Rockets, he made his first five shots. Nickel tried to save it, but on court one into the crowd. And really, the Wiley veteran, Kevin Mitchell, the only reason that Ohio series all year, been without Jason Carter, one of the best freshmen in the conference last year. He's only been able to play in three games this year, dealing with a stress fracture to one of his legs. Ben Vanderplas, a true freshman, been out all year with a leg injury himself, and A.J. Guerreri has missed a bunch of time, and Mickle and Dardis and Laster have all missed time due to injury as well. Really still trying to find a rotation and a lot of times plugging square pegs into round holes. Now they got called for steps. You have certain years that go like that where you just can't seem to stay healthy. Your success as a team will depend on two steps up in the meantime. That's why you hear some teams say next man up. And because that phrase really applies in years that you have a lot of injuries. That has been a mantra for Ohio this year as well. They've needed the next man to step up. Tavion Kirk in large part has done just that. Yes, he has. And speaking of a conversation with his AAU coach last couple days, he really described this kid as a true competitor. He's, he has an edge to him. And you'll see right there, he was a little over aggressive right here going to the lane. Didn't realize that the help was there, but he, you know, had nothing but great words. Played for a team called the Young and Restless out of Chicago. And, said that this kid looks for edges. He looks for challenges. He looks for disrespect. Um, players have known for him to be a slightly a little bit of a talker out there, and, and it really gets him going. He's had a phenomenal freshman year. Got a great start tonight, though, for Kirk. Three turnovers in four minutes. Dylan Alderson missing the corner three, but Kirk comes up with the rebound. Saul Phillips loves his personality. He says he's never had to go to a self-image seminar. He's pretty comfortable in his own skin. Yeah, and that's not to be said about a lot, a lot of freshmen who are, who come in and try not to step on any toes or, or just try to fit in. He's the opposite of that. James Gullen fouled in the lane. It's the first on Justin Roberts, Toledo's backup point guard. Sophomore in off the bench, a terrific defensive player and does an outstanding job of hanging on to the ball. He has just one turnover for every 35 minutes played this year. That's true consistency. That's a great job. That means coach can trust you. You're going to continue to stay in a rotation if you take care of the ball like that. He's a coach's son. His father, Norm Roberts, the associate head coach at Kansas. Also a former head coach at St. John's. That makes sense because he always has a calm about him. He never gets rattled. It seems like he's been in a lot of situations before. Get Doug Taylor for a moving screen. Junior from Columbus, who has really become a vocal leader on this Ohio team, something that Saul Phillips told me today he never would have expected when he recruited him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's absolutely stepped up to the plate. He's having a phenomenal year. He's been really locked in. Saul said he was the only one of his players that really played well against Toledo first time around, he said. But saying Doug Taylor competed and played well is like saying the Titanic had real nice deck chairs. <laughs> Meanwhile, Toledo continues to knock down shots from beyond the arc. They are 5 of 8. Catch and shoot 3 for Gullen at the other end. 
And that's going to be a question for Ohio all night. Can they keep up with Toledo's three-point shooting? If you're not going to stop Toledo from making threes, can you hit enough of your own? Enough of your own. Good defense by Gullen. Fletcher put it off the other side of the backboard. It will stay with Toledo. 19 on the shot clock as Jalen Sanford returns. Alderson goes to the bench. Jalen Sanford, who got to the 1,000-point threshold earlier this season. This is 92nd consecutive start. He has never come off the bench here at Toledo. Fletcher attacks from the wing. Got Dardis airborne. Extra pass from Sanford to Justin Roberts. Like that pass from Sanford there. Great shot by Roberts, but speaking about Sanford and him starting every game, since he stepped foot on campus, he's been a model of consistency. He's made shots. He showed toys. When you have a guy like that, you're really going to gain a coach's trust, and he's going to put you in his plans to be out there. He was a shot maker when we got here. Now he's a shot creator for both himself and others. And that's a level of development. As you mentioned, he walked in, able to shoot the ball, but him, again, another good pass. Him being able to get somebody else a good look is just pure development. There's that fearlessness Shown by the freshman, Tavion Kirk, not afraid of the 6'11", Luke Kanapke running right at him. With there being a glut of teams under the top two teams, it's incredible that Ohio still has a chance with the record that they have. But the way the year has shaked out, if they can get healthy over this final stretch run, they'll be right there competing for that home game. And the injuries that we talked about earlier have meant that some guys have had to play out of position like Gavin Block, who's back defensively with Treshawn Fletcher running at him. And Fletcher draws the foul. Saul Phillips says that in a perfect world, Gavin Block would be his two guard. He's having to play power forward this year. He has really taken a beating. Block is called for that foul, his first. With Block's ability to shoot the ball, playing power forward is really affecting him. You would think he has mismatches on one end as far as there's a bigger guy guarding him. But on the other end, it's like he's taking a beating. So he's a little bit more fatigued. He's getting different shots. And it's a bigger guy running at him. All of those factors affect the seasons that you have personally. That's Zach Butler back in for Tavion Kirk. One freshman point guard replacing another. Fletcher hits the two free throws. Butler is from Spartansburg, South Carolina. Just to give you an idea of how tough he is, he played in his state championship game last year in South Carolina with a broken nose, didn't wear a mask. Saul Phillips said he had no idea until long afterwards that anything was wrong with him. And oh yeah, he had a bucket with 20 seconds left that won the state championship for his high school. That area of Spartanburg, it's a lot of tough kids down there. It's a football country. They have great football teams. I'm sure Butler grew up you know, in a uh, playing football himself as he has a Good physique on them, and they play through pain. Jordan Dardis hits the follow-away 29 seconds deep into the shot clock. Kind of a busted possession, but Dardis, the junior from Newark, Ohio, bailed them out. Always helps when you make shots. Doesn't matter what went on in the play. When you, can, when you have a guy who can make a shot and bail you out, everything looks good. Seven guys have scored so far for Toledo. Taylor Radway has it swatted here to the front row by Kevin Mickle. Seven guys have scored. Five different players have made at least one three. Talk about pick your poison, right? That's balance. When you can't game plan for any one player, you're in for a long night, it's especially with guys are hitting shots. It's, it's just a thing where you're just going to have to play honest, solid defense. Badway rolling to the cup, and Jalen Sanford set him up. Taylor Adway now with four points. Some great early defense on Doug Taylor to get him out of the offensive flow. See how he fares against Kevin Mickle, who had those 11 quick points. Adway bumped him, and Mickle heads to the line. Well, Mickle's feeling good tonight. Everything he's doing has been working. He's, the, the block he had, the other possession, and his post moves are working. What, what they should might think about doing is throwing him off balance with a double team. He's getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage. He feels too comfortable. Maybe a double team would throw his rhythm off, make him pass, and before you know it, they'll get Taylor back in the game. The well-traveled Kevin Mickle at the free-throw line. He was born in Guyana, 
Moved to Brooklyn at age 10. Started his college career at Central Connecticut State. Took a redshirt year there, then ended up at a junior college in Florida. Then at Florida Gulf Coast, where he was a part of two NCAA tournament teams. And now at Ohio, getting his master's degree in coaching education. Trayshawn Fletcher, now with nine points. Yeah. Nichols well traveled in. Fletcher there, you'll see that it was actually good defense by the Ohio player. But Fletcher, using his pivot, was able just to get to that middle and get to a strong hand and make the hook. The Rocket lead up to 15. Butler shuffled his feet in the lane. Saul Phillips has done something really interesting, I think, with Zach Butler and Tavion Kirk, two freshman point guards battling one another for time on the floor. They live together. They've become very close friends. Saul Phillips said he didn't want there to be any animosity or anything like that, no rivalry between his two lead guards. He thought if they're always on top of one another, they'll become close, and they have been. The miss was tipped out to Jalen Sanford by Taylor Adway. Marion Jackson for three. Plucked out of the air by Mike Laster, the senior from Detroit. In situations where you have roommates or two players vying for the same position like that, they end up becoming friends and also gym buddies. There's probably nights they both get up and go back over to the, to the center and shoot and things like that. That eliminates a little bit of the animosity that you'll have with the player time. Nate Navagato cannot miss. He is three for three from downtown, and Toledo up 18. He needed a game like this. He needed to see a couple of a couple a few shots go in. He's a he's a key to the way that they play. And if he's stretching the floor, then Toledo's really deadly. Mike Laster going on the attack. He was fouled by Trayshawn Fletcher, who would like an explanation, please. Fletcher's Fletcher's really been a little out of sync this game. He's not gotten some calls going his way. Ohio has made it a game plan to double team him and try to get him out of his thing. You'll see here him driving, and he feels he got all ball, but it's the the um factor of that slap down. Most of the time, if the offensive player loses the ball, they're going to call that. It's a testament to just how good Trayshawn Fletcher has been this year, that he's got nine points, five rebounds, yet to miss a shot. And we're still saying, you know, he doesn't really look like himself, does he? That's how good he is. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's a low. He does everything. He's the heart and soul of this Toledo team. He can play behind the three-point line, in the lane, plays defense. And as you mentioned, here we are saying he looks out of sync because, uh, you know, he felt he didn't foul the guy. <laughs> In the eyes of many around the conference, Treshawn Fletcher is the MVP in the league this year. That's the second time that James Gullen has jumped a pass route on an entry pass and forced a turnover. That has been the Rockets' Achilles heel thus far. They've turned it over eight times. Ohio with seven giveaways themselves. That's something they want to correct because if Ohio starts making shots off some of these turnovers, it's going to make it a closer game than it should be. Dardis threw nothing but air. Gullen swooped in to save it. Mickel picked it up along the deck. Sanford diving after it. Now trying to keep it alive and picked up by Kirk. A new shot clock for Ohio and a timeout called by the Bobcats. A heady play. 344 left in the... Toledo collectively 11 assists on 13 made baskets. That's outstanding. It's the way they share the ball. It's the mantra of this year. You don't know who to guard because they're all moving the ball so well. It's the ninth Toledo turnover. The Euro step in a first bucket for Tavion Kirk. And if he can get going, the Bobcats will make this a single-digit game in a hurry. Yeah, there he is. He's getting out in the passing lane. He has great anticipation. Looks like he knows when those passes are coming. But there's Kirk again getting to the lane off that string and roll. Treshawn Fletcher now with 11 points. Student section like that one. That was what Saul Phillips said at shoot-around his team really needed to prevent was Treshawn Fletcher getting downhill into the lane and making plays either for himself or others. Yep, and I misspoke about it being Kirk, but Fletcher going off that pick-and-roll left, it's hard to stop it because if you do hedge out hard, he's a great passer. He can hit the roll or the pop man. So that's, that's a real luxury that Toledo has, that he can run the pick-and-roll. Marion Jackson's first foul. He gets the hook. Jalen Sanford returns. But 
been a cold shooting first half for the Bobcats, 37 and a half percent. Two of seven from beyond the arc. Shot clock is at five. Mickle backing in on Kanapke, who sends it back in his face. Well, the follow-up didn't catch the rim. Great one-on-one -on -one defense. There was no double team. That was just Kanapke against Mickle, and he anticipated. He took the bump, anticipated the hook, and was able to stuff it back in his face. Mike Laster and Doug Taylor return for Ohio. Toledo really trying to put some distance between themselves and the Bobcats, and Kanapke was maybe too wide open under the basket and too unselfish there. Mm -hmm. He has to turn and finish that. No matter whether, I know he got a shot block earlier, but no matter who's there, you're 6'10", there at the rim, go up strong. It's Gavin Block back in for Ohio. Reggie Butler works with big men, though bigs is not your preferred term, is it? No, I like calling these guys tall. Talls. The way the game has evolved, you know, you have players like Kanapi who's tall and might not be a physically imposing player, but his length is everything. Like right there, had he put his mind into going up, nobody would have blocked that shot. So I like to refer to these guys as talls as that's what they are. The, the bigger guys are no longer. Navagato finally misses one. He had made his first three from beyond the arc. Could not answer Mike Laster's triple at the other end. Maybe on Kirk, a wild dribble, lost it out of bounds. The ninth Ohio turnover. And if you look, Ohio's not open anywhere. Toledo is doing a good job whether they're switching screens or, or whether they're hedging going under they have their defensive game plan down they just have to take care of the ball and this this game will probably be more than it was than it is roberts step inside the line kirk with the rebounder with the eyes up looking to run goes right at jalen sanford and missed off the window sanford with good one-on-one -on -one defense there able to show his hands and still by the Kirk shot. Sanford halfway down and out. And he has to continue to shoot that with confidence. Just because it went in, it's still a good shot. It was the best shot they had, had. So he'll knock more of those down than he misses. We're talking about Ohio near the top of the MAC division competing for a championship. But without them, you have guys who are learning on the fly. Kirk missed, and so did Doug Taylor on the tip. Kirk poked it away from Sanford, but caught some of Jalen. It's the second on the freshman from Juliet, Illinois. And that's a cheap one to get right before the half, just reaching in right there. Sanford's a good enough ball handler where he's not going to let you just take it from him. So he has to, Kirk has to do a better job of picking and choosing when he reaches in. Differential of roughly eight seconds between game and shot clock here. And this is a luxury for Toledo, having a player like Fletcher who can handle the ball in a horn set up top and get a shot. Roberts didn't take it, chose to drive inside, but still would have been a good possession for Toledo. Leads to a transition three for James Gullen. James Gullen. And you see Fletcher there, an uh, emotional player, and just being sick, it held him down a little. Dardis over the backboard at the long swing to try to get back in this game. They're going to give it all they have from the start to, to try to low, lower the score, and I've looked for Toledo to really cut on their turnovers. The reason the game is within 10 is because they've given Ohio some chances in the turnover game. Rayshon Fletcher didn't get the roll there. It ends up in the hands of Tavion Kirk. And that really is a key for Ohio. He has to get going. We mentioned two points in the first half, but five turnovers. And the way he's been playing all year, that hasn't happened. So if he could get going, 
Ohio's going to feel back to normal, like with that shot right there. <laughs> right on cue, Tavion Kirk makes it an eight-point game, and already a better start to the second half than the first half for Ohio. Toledo over the game, you may remember, on a 15-0 run. So besides that run, it's been a pretty even game thus far. Toledo's going to have to run their offense and get Fletcher back involved in that pick and roll. Jalen Sanford knocks down the long two, give him seven points for the game. Junior from Evansville, Indiana, averaging 16.7 points a night. Mike Lester held to just five points in the first half. Kevin Block has been quiet as well. He has missed all four shots that he has attempted. And a guy like Lester, who, who's a senior, you're going to look for him to have a strong half and be a little more aggressive. This is his last go round, and he doesn't want to go down without a fight. Avion Kirk was aggressive there. He was fouled by his fellow freshman point guard, Marion Jackson. Marion, a freshman from Cleveland, one of the best three point shooters in the league at 44%. He's having a great freshman year in his own way. And it's, it's funny, you see both of them are the same age, you know, coming out of the, the, the same class. And they have, with Morion being a little bit more of the shooter and Kirk being a little bit more of the penetrator and, 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 and getting fouled, getting to the lane. But it also depends on who they're playing with. Morion is resort. It, Morion has opportunities to shoot with Fletcher creating plays. Kirk has to kind of create everything himself. Sanford will do it all by himself, and a foul is called. See if they got Doug Taylor or Gavin Block. Lamont Simpson has to get in the way. It's the second foul on Doug Taylor. And the way Toledo plays, they've really negated Taylor from this game with, with Kanaki coming off and shooting those threes and getting away from the lane and Toledo him having to hedge on so many it's taken away him away from his back to the basket game he's constantly moving he can't really get entrenched down there Galen Sanford hits the free throws it's been outstanding from the line in conference play 87% Goes Gavin Block. Tees up Doug Taylor, and Taylor with his first points of the game. He missed his first three shots in the first three minutes or so of the opening half. Good job of him by a good job of him adjusting. He wasn't able to get anything going on the low lock, low block, so he was able to step out and hit a jump shot. Doug Taylor played at Columbus Northland High School. Same school that produced the likes of Jared Sullinger and Trey Burke. Uh, Trey Burke, that is, and that's a block for Doug Taylor. Leads the league in blocks, two per game at five of them against Toledo the first time around as Gavin Block misses the three. That's what it does. That block he had, that's what he does. That block he had allowed them to get a good look, it just didn't go down. Active hands by Jordan Darnis to tip that out of bounds. Treshawn Fletcher doing what he does best there, getting into the lane and kicking to an open teammate on the perimeter. That's, that's what makes him so versatile. Usually it's a guard that's coming off of those pick and rolls, but with with Treshawn being six seven six eight and him doing it, it's just a completely different feel. The guy who's guarding him usually isn't guarding the ball handler in the pick and roll situation. Fletcher at the elbow, left it short, and Kirk with a rebound for Ohio. Trim the deficit to nine. And still nine. Kirk missed the floater. Got it back off the hands of Adway to stick it in. It's a situation where you follow all floaters. The way floaters miss is they come off high off the front of the rim. So if you follow that shot, you have a chance to get that rebound back just as the play he did. Toledo just one of four from the floor to start this second half. Devin Block in the shirt of Treshawn Fletcher. Block getting a little bit too aggressive there, and you got to be careful. You're right on the side of the referees. It's hard to guard the, the way the rules are today. It's hard to guard the guy with the ball so aggressively. Toledo needing a win tonight, presumably to keep pace with Buffalo. 
atop the Mac. Buffalo blowing out Kent State at halftime of their game. Shot clock at seven. Taylor poked it away from Fletcher momentarily. Fletcher goes on the offensive. Taylor with the block and picked up by block along the baseline. Taylor has really good timing. He's able to get those layups and block them at the apex of the shot. He doesn't smack down on people's hands and foul people. He's able to go get those shots in the air. Doug Taylor credited with four blocked shots thus far. Has a really good knack, and that's something that you just can't teach. You've tried, I would think. Yeah, and, and we, <laughs> we have some things we do as far as giving them reps. But it's um, to be able to go and get a shot in the air, that takes a level of athleticism, and it also takes timing. That's a backcourt violation. Tavion Kirk could not save it. At the under-16 timeout of the second half. Oh, here Throw up shooting in the driveway for the that five-day stretch that you're in taking part in the tournament weekend. From the moment you arrive, you have maybe 5,000 fans at your open practice. Everything is top-notch. It's, it's such an exciting time. It's, it's an exclusive club. There's only 68 teams per year that get to take part in it. And it, it's, it's just the culmination of a hard work year. There's nothing that can replace that feeling of making it to the tournament. Toledo trying to get back there for the first time in a long time. Last played in the big dance in 1980. They lost to Florida State in the opening round 94-91. That is the third foul on Tavion Kirk. Saul Phillips not happy. His freshman will have to take a seat on the bench, and another freshman, Zach Butler, replaces him. And Toledo's in a situation where if they can impose their will over that three- to four-day stretch of the MAC tournament, they can get there. You don't have to make every shot, but you just have to play your style Probably, probably be a nail-biter game. They'll probably be a more comfortable game. But if you are able to get your guys dialed in for that stretch of time during that weekend, they can make a run at this tournament. As Doug Taylor picks up his third foul. You mentioned you don't have to make every shot. Toledo barely made any shot so far in the second half. Just one of six from the floor. Luke Kanapke to the free throw line where he shoots almost 80%. And a good thing for Toledo is having a player like Kanapke. That's why I stressed earlier that he has to be aggressive. When shots aren't going in, you have to be able to throw the ball inside and get to the free throw line. Free throws are like Band-Aids. They, the, they stop a team from bleeding, you know, during a, a route or, or, excuse me, during a drought. And there it is. It got them another chance at a three. Big four-point possession for Toledo. One point from Kanapke, a big three from Jalen Sanford. He leads Toledo with 12 points. Kevin Mickle was the spark plug for Ohio in the first half and could not score over Kanapke. Marion Jackson feeling at that left knee, and he goes down in a heap. He might have landed wrong after that rebound. Brian Jones, the longtime Toledo trainer, out to check on him. And Marion Jackson, the freshman from Cleveland, in a lot of pain. Hmm. Had an outstanding. Got a table set up in the corridor. I can sort of see it down to my left. Checking him out preliminarily there. Justin Roberts has checked in. James Gordon, the fourth, out there as well. And Gordon will head to the free throw line. Toledo being able to get to the basket and get fouled over these last two possessions has been key to them keeping this lead spaced. When, when the threes aren't going in, you know, what can you do? What does your team offer? In a recent practice, Coach K actually had the entire team running through one particular set where they got the ball to the post and he had every player go through it 
and which kind of put them in a mentality. It just doesn't have to be the tall players or the biggest players posting up. It could be anybody, but there's times where we're going to need to get that ball inside. James Gordon, the fourth, missed the second free throw. We get Luke Kanatke, and I think for an over the back. I beg your pardon, that's the second on Trayshawn Fletcher. So you would think more minutes down the stretch for Justin Roberts with Marion Jackson out of the game. Roberts averages 8.8 .8 minutes per contest. There's Mickle going to work on Luke Kanapke, the hook. Got it to nestle in, a soft bounce off the heel. He's really unorthodox to guard. He posts up, but then once he gets it, he actually makes dribble moves in such a small space. And Kanapke's used to guarding guys who want to back him down and things like that. So that was a good move by Mickle. Here's Gordon, who has been the recipient of Willie Jackson's minutes. With Willie Jackson's injury, count the bucket, and one more coming for James Gordon, the fourth. Great job of staying with his shot. He missed the first one, but you see, see there the good move, good strong move there, but he stayed active. And Ohio's inability to grab that rebound or follow this shot and was able to get a chance at three. Gordon, a guy in his last three games, is averaging 4.3 points a game, couple of rebounds, seven minutes a game. He might have had seven minutes in all of non-conference play this year, but has really picked it up in place of Willie Jackson. Toledo lead back up to 13. Plays like that is how you can do it. You can maximize your time in. You know, maybe plays aren't getting ra ran for you, but if you're able to get offensive rebound and putbacks, those are three at a time. Strong rebound for Jalen Sanford. Guard rebounding has been a big point of emphasis for Todd Kowalczyk's team this year. Last year they had the best defensive rebounder in the country and Steve Taylor Jr. Team rebounding has been terrific all season for Toledo. Kanapke to the free throw line. Foul is called on Kevin Mickle. And Coach K is right. When you lose a player like Steve Taylor, who can get rebound, 10 rebounds all by himself, you have to rebound as a team. You know, you have your inside players who are kind of boxing out. Yeah, they should grab it, but the guard should come off the perimeter and come in there and help out rebounding because they're the guys who can actually push the tempo. So guards who rebound are actually very dangerous because they can dribble the ball up also. 10 might have been on the lower end of Steve Taylor's rebounding <laughs> nights last year. True. Kanapke now with seven points. And you'll see here, Toledo has been able to expand this lead even without hitting, hitting the threes. Nickel maybe too quick of a trigger on the jump shot. See how Roberts does leading the offense. And remember, Jalen Sanford started every game at the point last year, so he can be the lead guard when he has to. Missed the three there, but a foul is called on James Gullen. Good job by Fletcher trying for that rebound. Caused, caused the Ohio defender to foul him. So Toledo already in the bonus. That's the eighth Ohio foul of this second half. Toledo called for just two. That's Trayshawn Fletcher's first point of the second half. He is the only player in the conference to be in the top ten in scoring, rebounding, and assists. Third in scoring and rebounding, fourth in assists this year. Just a Swiss Army knife. He's an intelligent player that has ability. That makes him even more scary. He's athletic. He's aggressive and skilled. So, you know, and, and the way Coach K has put him in the pick and roll, it just really utilizes all of his abilities. Very good defensively. Good shooter, 37% from beyond the arc. As we've seen more and more as the season has progressed, he's comfortable bringing the ball up the floor and initiating the offense. Nickel with an offensive rebound. Took a deflection into the backcourt where Kirk ran it down. Kirk goes around. James Gordon was sandwiched. Got it to go. And one more coming at the line. Foul is on Gordon. 
that kid doesn't care who's in there. He's going. He's, he's going to, you know, go in there and try to create that, con that contact. And Toledo's going to have to do a better job of stepping up a little earlier, not trying to block the shot, but get your body in the way. Kirk missed the free throw. was a new one from the pep band by the way that's terrible you're terrible go Rockets Fletcher unable to connect from downtown scoop forward by Lester to Tavion Kirk Mickle running the floor he was able to get the step off Kanaki and beat him down Kanaki has to be sure he sprints back on defense here's Gordon Nice spin on Lester. Didn't get the roll. Tapped up by Fletcher, but right to Tavion Kirk. Kirk to Mickle. Nice move. Swatted away by Kanapke. Kirk missed the follow, and Kanapke with the rebound. Kanapke had five blocks in Toledo's win at Miami on Friday. That's the most by a Toledo player since Matt Smith had five in a game against Northern Illinois in March of 2013. Good job by Kanapke protecting the rim. That's your house down there, big fella. Don't let anybody in there. His second block in this game. Sanford, Kanapke, Roberts, in and out. All right, that's a good play by Toledo. Laster too far under the basket to do much with it. Mickle trying to create space, and he does. Creates two points, too. He's got 18, one off his career high. He really has a strong base. Kanapke did a good job playing defense, but Mickle was able to use his pivot without traveling to get to free himself. Mickle had 19 in a game at Marshall earlier this year. Game at Marshall won 99 to 96. Gullen saved it to Laster along the baseline. Laster for three. Got it. A 9 nothing run for the Bobcats. Those are miscommunication and some, some things. And Ohio has got some threes and also some layups running the floor. Nate Navagato back out there for Toledo. Dylan Alderson has checked in as well. Navagato had those three quick threes in the first half and nothing since. Roberts setting up Dylan Alderson from the outside in the long rebound with Mike Laster. And this Toledo drought continues. They have missed six consecutive shots, but that's a bad Ohio turnover. That is. Laster, actually, I, I'm not sure what he was doing, but, you know, you're up ahead. You're, you shouldn't be throwing it to a guy behind you. And when you have Hill, he'll go to the hole strong. All of the guys love. So, you know, for a couple of minutes there, I think that they were down about that, but they're going to have to get their heads back into it and, come out strong here out of this timeout. Jalen Sanford running the show with Marianne Jackson not available. Kanapke kicking to Roberts. Here goes Sanford on the attack. Saw a path to the basket and took it. Jalen Sanford now with 14. He was actually able to bail them out of that. They looked like they had a shot earlier, but Roberts wasn't able to gather that pass connect gave him and shoot the ball had ended a scoring drought of almost four minutes Tavion Kirk stops twists turns and lays it in Tavion Kirk with 11 yeah, that kid is tricky down there when you think you have a beat on him where he's coming from he pivots and spins around and he's looking to score 100 percent Tavion Kirk a guy that Saul Phillips has described as a bulldog Sanford to the free throw line was fouled by Jordan Dardis. He's had a really quiet game, just four points on four shots. Remember, this is a guy that made 10 threes against Akron last week. Toledo has done a good job of eliminating him. And with Sanford here at the free throw line, the best part about that play was his non-hesitancy to catch a shooting. It actually caused him to foul it. Toledo, is, I think they passed up a few shots in the last couple of possessions. Sanford being aggressive there got him to the line. 
So Roberts checks out with Fletcher back in. It's an interesting Toledo lineup. Got Sanford at 6-3 running the show with the 6-5 Dylan Alderson and Fletcher at 6-7. Peyton Navigato at 6 in and Luke Kanapke, the long arm of the law, at 6-11. And if you notice this lineup, all five guys can shoot. Everybody except for Kanapke is pretty much can dribble and create a play on their own. So I look for Toledo to get more steals and also to open up their offensive game. It was thrown at the feet of Doug Taylor. 13th Ohio turnover. Kanapke left alone from the top. Avion Kirk with the board. Toledo after a red-hot start to this game from three. Cooled off considerably now 8 of 20. And just one of six from beyond the arc in this second half. Treshawn Fletcher picks up his third foul. Joe has gotten, hasn't been in their favor. I think they've actually passed up some good-looking threes to maybe take some difficult shots. And Ohio has, has actually gotten good shots over this stretch. Hey! Davion Kirk heads to the free throw line. He was bumped by Dylan Alderson. Toledo in this second half from the floor, just 23 and a half percent. They've made just four of their 17 shots. Well, this is a good experience for them heading into the MAC tournament. Every game has its own life. And this could turn into one of those grind out games. What can you do when you're not making threes? How you, you know, how you have been all season. So their ability to adjust themselves and adjust their style over these last couple of minutes will be key for them. Not what Ohio needed right there. Missed free throws from Tavion Kirk. Seventy-two percent foul shooter, but has made just one of five tonight. And Toledo with a big free throw shooting advantage. They're 14 of 17 from the line. Ohio just four of nine in total. Navigato working his way in. Adway goes up and scores. Good job of Adway hanging around the rim, making himself available. Taylor Adway, six points, three rebounds. That was a bucket that the Rockets desperately needed. Kirk missed the leaner. Sean Fletcher is in a quiet second half. 13 points, six rebounds for the game. I look for him to get a little more aggressive. He's the perfect player uh, for what you want to say to close out games. Bad shot from Adway. Not what Toledo needed there. The other end, a catch and shoot three for Gavin Block, who has not scored tonight. He has missed all six shots he has attempted. On the road, sometimes you have nights like that. Oh, going to get Gullen for the foul, and he can't believe it. He got tangled up with Treshawn Fletcher. Fletcher with a good job of um, throwing himself into Gullen's body and, and, and causing them, you know, the arm tangling up, and that's how you get to the free throw line. That's what makes him so good. Rayshon Fletcher for the year, 69.5% from the line. We talked about the NCAA tournament earlier. James Gullen's big brother, Jacob, knows a thing or two about the tournament. He was on that Mercer team that beat Duke in the 2014 tournament. Jacob had 20 points in their upset win over the Blue Devils. The Blue Devils were a strong team with Jabari Parker, but... In the NCAA tournament, anything can happen. You have a lot of situations where the quote unquote stronger teams have young players. They might be dyna dynamic and headed to the NBA, but a team like Mercer has upperclassmen, and it's one game. That's the difference between college and the NCAA. Those upperclassmen, the 22 and 23 year olds, they're not scared of the moment. Foul was on one of Toledo's upperclassmen, Taylor Radway, before the shot. This Toledo junior class, Adway, Navigato, Sanford, and Kanatke all very close. Taylor Adway has described them as being thick as thieves. Adway helping to deny Kevin Nickel there. Navigato, a catch and shoot three in and out. 
That's the shot Toledo wants. You can't hit him without taking him. Kerr got it to go. It was fouled by Adway. Looking at this kid, you cannot tell he's a freshman. The way he pushes it, his desire to get in there into the rim, you know, he just shrugs off. And Adway's a strong guy, and he just shrugs that grab off like it's nothing. So he's, 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 been, prepared, he's been prepped for this. You can tell he's put a lot of work in and played this high-pressure game before. Davion Kirk had just two points at halftime and 12 in the second half. 14 for the game. Nine rebounds, too, closing in on a double-double. Avogado bumps by Mike Laster, the senior. And it's a luxury for Toledo to be in the bonus because if they run their offense the right way, set screens, get people open, they'll get fouled just like that, and they're going to the line off of any bump. Here's Nate Navagato at the line, shooting almost 80% from the stripe, but misses the first. James Gullen comes back in for Mike Laster. Second one rattles home for Navagato from Geneva, Illinois. You have a guy like Navagato who once he sees one shot go in, he can give you four more in a row. So that's, you know, that's how shooters go. Percentages are what they are for a reason. But if he stays consistent and aggressive, taking the shots when he's open, he'll make them. Gullen missed the three on the handoff. Todd Kowalczyk wants the officials to talk about it. They won't. It's Ohio basketball. Block fighting for space. Cannot buy a basket, Gavin Block. He's missed all seven shots. He's struggling tonight on the road. Sometimes you're not comfortable with those rims. And I know he's had some good games before, but hasn't been able to knock any down tonight. The average is almost 10 points a game. Just over five minutes left. Ohio needing a stop so they can mount one last push. A wild shot from Sanford. Here comes Tavion Kirk. He'll go all the way in, lay it in, and the foul. You can see that developing. As he was coming, nobody stopped the ball for Toledo. A couple of guys ran back and pointed out. You'll see here, nobody's in front of him. So Roberts had to come away from the other side. Somebody has to stop the ball and make him pass, make him a passer instead of a penetrator. Toledo has struggled this season with guards that trying to get to the basket. Eugene German gave them a heck of a time last week. The outstanding sophomore from Northern Illinois. Thomas Wilder beating them up twice. He had 40 points against Toledo and the Rockets went over the Broncos up in Kalamazoo. Sanford found himself open for a moment. He had a step on Jordan Dardis. Good job of Toledo letting their offense score a point for him. Passed hard. They cut hard and, and also got each other open. Luke Kanapke reached in on Kevin Mickle. It's the ninth Toledo second half foul. And that's an opportunity for Kanapke to kind of learn what Mickle likes to do. He's gone middle every time. He goes middle and tries to get around to the other side, throwing, shooting the layup. If Kanapke cuts that middle off, I haven't seen Mickle turn over his right shoulder and shoot with his left hand yet. Nickel has tied his career high of 19 points. And now 20 for the game. He's had a lot of success tonight. He's gone his way. He's made a couple of jump shots. And if Toledo doesn't adjust, he'll be able to keep Ohio in the game.
Much better three-point defense by Ohio in this second half. Fletcher short on the jumper. Here they come on the run-up, three on one. Mickle for Gullen. It's a six-point game. Toledo has to make sure that they have balance. There's nobody back. Fletcher took the pull-up jump shot. Whatever guard is on the opposite side needs to be the first person back. We'll have a timeout on the next whistle. Todd Kowalczyk would prefer to not to have to take one himself. Shot clock down to four. Fletcher has to create. Nothing there. Takes a wild shot and he got it from the elbow. That is huge. That's the luxury of having Fletcher. And it's part of the reason. That shot there is part of the reason why he's going to, you know, be strongly considered for player of the year. He's been bailing the team out all year. In Toledo, now you need a stop. Mickle goes to work, created some space and got the bounce. Again, turn it over that left shoulder. Kanapka has to do a job of, hey, give it a try. Let's see if he can do it. You know, he might throw it over the basket or he might make it, but you have to try to make him do something he hasn't done. And Mickle has done a good job of forcing his way into a strong side. Shot clock down to 10 for the Rockets. Kanapke will set a screen. Sanford accelerates to blocking foul on the aptly named Gavin Block. Him in there, it's really resorted to Trayshawn Fletcher getting the ball at the end of the shot clock. And he's bailed them out a few times, but they need to get something going. They need to, first of all, and this is going to have to be at the defensive end, to get stopped and get out and run a little bit more. Jalen Sanford hits the free throws. 19 points for the game for him. Tavion Kirk has been terrific in the second half. 17 points, 10 rebounds. Kirk will try and drive on Sanford. Laster almost banked it in. Navagato, the long rebound for Toledo. That's the stop they need. Now they have to come down and run some good offense. I try to put Fletcher back in that pick and roll and let him create something. Gullen almost forced the turnover. Justin Roberts off the heel. Kanapke tried to tip it out, but it falls to Gullen. Under two minutes left in an eight point game. Gullen the trailer for three. Fletcher, a big rebound for the Rockets. Was that too quick of a shot, do you think, Reggie? It actually wasn't. He was in rhythm. The trailer, wh whoever gets the rebound in a situation like that and throws it ahead, the trailer gets a shot. That's a shot Guller probably works on. You know, he had his left, right step. Nobody was at five feet of him. I understand it was quick in the shot clock, but if he makes that in practice, then there you go. Also, look at the time. They needed to get some kind of shot up pretty quick. Why well, run 35 seconds, 30 seconds off the clock? Just to shoot a three, you might miss anyway. The fourth foul on Tavion Kirk. It seemed like kind of an unnecessary one at that. Justin Roberts to the line for two. Roberts shooting 64% from the stripe. With Marion Jackson's injury, Roberts set a new season high in minutes. He's played 19. Four points, couple of assists, and a rebound, you were saying? And he'll be key, as he's one of the ball handlers. Him knocking down free throws, down the stretch, taking the shots he should take, as he's passed up a few tonight. But he wants to look to be aggressive. You're out there. If you have the shot, you have to take it and also make smart decisions. Kirk fouled by Kanapke. So good at creating shots as he slithers around in and around the paint. He has an, again, a, a, a playground attitude to him. You know, uh, he, he does have structure for organized basketball, but when he's going downhill to the basket, it's like he's on the playground. He's trying to get to the basket. He doesn't let people throw him off course, and his goal is to get a shot up. Saul Phillips was saying, we're going to win a lot of games with TK running the show. 
the next three years and change. Said he didn't know Tavion Kirk at this time last year. Kirk was committed to Drake before coaching change there meant that he opened up his recruitment. Ohio needing a point guard as we talked about with the loss of Jerome Simmons. Up stepped Tavion Kirk and he's been outstanding for the Bobcats. And a kid like Kirk with the success he's had, his youth coaches mentioned that his sophomore year, there were some scouting services that had him as an NAIA Division III player, and he's one of those kids who finds those articles. You know, a lot of kids <laughs> say, hey, I don't look at that stuff. He went and found those articles and basically posted them up on his, you know, on his locker or in his room, and they fueled his work ethic, and look at what it's turned him into. They say never read your clippings. That's the kind of clippings that you probably should read. Exactly, because if you're any kind of competitor, that will fuel you to do better. 19 points tonight, though he does have four fouls. 19 points and 10 rebounds. Justin Roberts hits the two free throws. Dylan Alderson will check back in. Toledo will go with a small lineup as Kanapke departs. And that's what you can do with Alderson. He's he's a big, strong guard, so he can actually rebound better than his size indicates. And of course, he can make plays on the perimeter. Jalen Sanford can't believe he was called for the foul there. Well, what do you think, Reggie? Yeah, maybe caught him on the shoulder. Yep, he caught him on the arm there on the reach back. Yep. Yep, but again, there's Kirk. His goal is to get to the basket. No matter who's there, he's going to Euro step you. He's going to put the ball above your head. Toledo has to adjust. Has to adjust. I haven't seen anybody move back off and dare him into it a jump shot. Get after you right back in. Really been impressed. Tavion Kirk tonight, he'll check out. Zach Butler in, Kirk with the four fouls. Situation where they're trying to go offense to defense. Butler being so athletic, able to maybe speed Toledo up and get a turnover. Gullen fouls Roberts. Maybe not the guy to foul here. He's four for four at the line tonight. Though, really, it's a Toledo team that always shoots free throws exceptionally well. Second best free throw shooting team in the league at 73.3%. 23 of 27 at the line tonight. Uh, 24 for 28. That's one reason they're in first place. You rarely see a bottom team being the best free throw shooting team. It's always the winning teams, like the, say, the old Coach K adage, we're going to make more free throws than the other team takes. When you have, when you can get fouled and get to the line and make those free throws, you're always give yourself a chance to stop runs. In, a, in 10 days time, that's a Friday night tip off. Remember, moved for the national television audience. Here's Dardis for three. Jordan Dardis, a night to forget for him. Just four points on five shots. And he's had a few good looks here in the second half, but in the first half, Toledo was all over him. You could tell he was a focal point of who they wanted to shut down defensively. Maybe on Kirk now has fouled out. He departs with 21 points and 10 rebounds. He had a career high 24 in their overtime loss to Central Michigan not that long ago. Said afterward, he wasn't too happy with having fouled out, though he used more colorful language than that. Yeah, he's a competitor. He wants to be out there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a situation where it's, tonight he got called for a couple and a couple early, and he still was able to shake it off and have a productive second half. Nate Navagato with the line. And the lineup Toledo has out there, they're not going to miss many free throws. They're still big enough to rebound, but everybody out there can dribble, shoot, pass, and make a decision. So you can look for them to 
close this game out as they have their IQ lineup, so to say, out there. The Toledo team shooting 41.5% from three in conference play, though they're struggling a little bit of late by their standards. Last four games, just 33%. And tonight, 8 of 22, 1 of 8 in the second half. Mickle right through the crowd to lay it in. It's a 10-point game with 34 seconds left. And an immediate steal. They trap Sanford in the corner. And Sanford stepped out of bounds. That's one of, one of the worst places you want to throw it against the press is to the corner because you have the sideline and the baseline as a defender. You want to keep the ball in the middle of the court and pass the ball up against the press, not dribble it. See what Ohio can conjure up here. The lob for Mickle out of his reach. And yeah, Mickle races over to foul Sanford immediately. Nice play drawn up, but pressure on the ball caused them to pass, throw the pass a little too high. Our timeout coordinator at Savage Arena is Mike Lozier. Terrific crew as always. Jules Walker, Kate Pence, Desmond Phillips, Jacob Stutz, Sid Chowdhury, Sebastian Harloff, Pierre Thompson, Sean Hale, Stephen Estes, Elvira, Gwen Rostro, Ben Morris, Greg Smith, our director and technical director, our executive producer here at the University of Toledo is John Ida Miller. This is our last Toledo men's basketball ESPN3 broadcast for the season. Three more women's basketball broadcasts in the regular season as Gullen is fouled by Nate Navigato. So Gullen will shoot three with just over 23 seconds left. That's an unusual mistake by Navigato. At this point in the game, you're just trying to bother the shot. You're not going to block it. So you have to stay out of harm's way, so to say, and don't give them a chance at any four-point plays. James Gullen now with nine points. Also five rebounds and a couple of assists. I'd like to thank the terrific, as always, crew, both last semester and this semester on these ESPN3 broadcasts. It really is a treat to work with all of these fantastically talented University of Toledo students. And John Ida Miller and Greg Smith do a terrific job of keeping them in line. They keep me in line as well and I think I speak on behalf of Jay Gast and Nick Moore who filled in for Jay so ably last Tuesday. Thank you for all the tremendous work that you do. It's been a lot of fun covering this Toledo men's team this season. Nate Navigato is fouled. They have been just so much fun to watch. The offense has been firing on all cylinders for most of the season, less so in the second half tonight, but they have been so much fun to watch. Todd Kowalczyk says Every year we don't go into it just to win the West. We want to win the whole thing and get back to the NCAA tournament. And he has had some good teams here at Toledo, but he thinks this is the most talented and they may have the best chance of any that he has had here to get back to the big dance. We mentioned earlier that Toledo has not been to the NCAA tournament since 1980. And of course, a lot of Toledo fans holding their breath waiting for an update on the status of Marion Jackson. He was injured earlier in the second half. Looked like a knee injury at the time. We'll wait and see what Todd Kowalczyk says after the game. I agree. A player like a, a player like Marion will be key to them winning three day, three games in three days in Cleveland. The versatility he brings, you know, they're going to need that. They have other players who can step up, but he's been there all season and the team is He's gotten accustomed to what he brings. That's another Ohio foul. Block and Mickle going for the tie-up. Did not get it. Remember those last two Toledo home games this year. Central Michigan and Eastern Michigan. Those are two Friday night games. You can catch those on another network. The Rockets try and battle it out with Buffalo for the regular season championship in that 
always coveted top seed in Cleveland in the MAC tournament. And Toledo and Buffalo, who have been so good all season long, and then teams like Western Michigan and Ball State nipping at their heels, both of whom have really improved as the season has progressed. This is this is a tough conference, top to bottom, and. You have teams that have, as you mentioned, gotten better during season. So you might have played them earlier and beat them, but they could be a different team in Cleveland. So that's why, you know, Toledo wants to be sure. Toledo, Ohio, every team wants to be sure that they're evolving during season. Final few seconds will take away the authoritative flush from Zach Butler, but too little, too late for the Bobcats. The Rockets without their point guard for much of the second half. They hang on.